Happy Monday. Good morning. Good morning. Move my camera over a little bit. There we go. Hello, my new mug. I bought a bunch of new mugs and I'm so excited. This is one of them. Hi, Kathy. Good morning. Oh, just waiting on people to join in. I have two dogs with me today. Emma and Pig. Pig is on fire looking for her ball. Do you want to say hi? We're waiting for people to join. You want to say hi? You want to say hi? All right. Out you go. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. <laughs> you have a lot to say today. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> Oh, these little furry creatures, huh? Yeah, you're gonna tell them what you wanna say about Monday? Yeah. She's got a lot to say today. Today we're gonna talk about biochemical individuality. I wonder what that means. I'm gonna tell ya. All right, Pig, you think you can be quiet? Yeah, well, we'll see. We will see. Here you go, love. It's a treat, good girl. Come here, Emma. Good girl. All right, Emma's camera shy. You might not see her too much. Um, so, good morning. Did everyone have a nice weekend? Looks like people are showing up, so it's good. Nice to see you all. Um, nice, very busy weekend here around the Pingle House. Lots going on this week, just a lot. In fact, I'll remind you guys tomorrow, but I won't be here Wednesday because I'm shooting some new content. Um, and I'm excited about it. Uh, so I have a lot going on, a lot in the mix. And so um, unfortunately, I'm going to be on set Wednesday morning, so I will not be here, but um, I will replay something. Uh, maybe one from the vault that we haven't played in a while, so you guys um, can still check it out. But I won't be here Wednesday. I will be here tomorrow. Good morning, Carrie. Good to see you, my friend. Hello. Hello, hello. All right, so. I am Dr. Trisha Pingle, and this is your morning checkup. And uh, we're gonna talk about something called biochemical individuality uh, today. Now, what the heck, what the heck is that? You know, in this modern medical world, everyone is commonly treated the same, right? If you have a certain set of symptoms or you have a certain diagnosis, you really sometimes only have so many options of treatment. So you might have a pharmaceutical or surgery or like one other recommendation, right? Or you may, they may recommend a medication, but if you react to that, there's another medication. But for the most part, we're kind of all put into a box. And you know, you learn this in med school and I see the advantage in many cases um, there's a, we have a lot of charts that we learn, like someone shows up and they have a cough and if they have a cough, it's yes, no, and then it flows down. And then depending on what someone says, it moves down and it helps you move through, through diagnosis. Now, looking at the, um, you know, the number of things that I had to learn in medical school, those charts can come in somewhat handy periodically. However, we're not all the same. We just, you know, we may have the same diagnosis, we may have the same symptoms, but that doesn't mean we all should have the same treatment. And that's where biochemical individuality comes in, okay? Um, so, no two people are the same. So why should our medical treatment be identical, right? Right, so that's what biochemical individuality is, and that is something that I spend a lot of time working in, in the type of medicine that I do. Um, now, there are times where I, I definitely do use, um, <laughs> Emma's sitting here staring at me, my bloodhound staring at me, literally just, what? Okay. <laughs> she won't say hi, though, will she? There she is. Facebook could see her. There you go, Instagram. There's Emma. <laughs> Um, so I, I'm going to talk a lot today about nutrients and nutrient absorption and why we all have such different requirements, even though essentially we have the same body makeup, right? We all have to break glucose down for energy that requires the same amount of nutrients to do that. However, each body may need more or less of that nutrient based on its lifestyle and its environment. That makes a huge difference. And that's where this individuality comes into play. Um, 
Now, you could think of this similar to your fingerprint, right? Um, no one else will ever have the exact same fingerprint as you do. And nobody else will have the exact same nutritional requirement as you do. I get asked all the time, you know, uh, what multivitamin should I be taking? What, how much B6 should I be taking? How much vitamin C? And my answer is never straightforward because it really depends on the person. And it depends on how much stress you're under. I mean, we've spent a ton of time talking about how stress impacts your body. And we will talk about that today. Um, but all of the, you know, what health conditions you have, how you eat, whether you exercise, do you live in a sunny climate? Do you live in a rainy climate? Where are you in altitude? I mean, all these things do make a difference on how you absorb nutrients from your food and how you, you know, how many nutrients you would need. So it's very, very important to look at that as a doctor. Okay. So this idea of, by, do you guys agree? First of all, right? I think this is a little hole in the medical system. I think I think there's a lot of benefits to all different types of medicine. Um, and I think as a collective unit, we actually have all the pieces to treat people individually. But unfortunately, if you're only seeing one doctor and they're only looking at one particular thing um, and they're treating you all the same, you're not gonna get as many, um, as many benefits from the treatment as you could if you also had someone um, you know, with training such as mine in there watching the amounts of nutrients and helping support the system. Even when it comes to, um, uh, medications, when you have to use medications, for example, um, people that are on metformin for diabetes, that impacts their B12 levels. If it impacts their B12 levels, it impacts their B6 levels. If it impacts their B12 and B6 levels, it impacts their methylated folate levels, right? Those are all highly regulated in blood pressure. So then if you also have blood pressure medication, those nutrients change, right? The amount of B vitamins that that person needs versus me, who's not on metformin, is different. Right? So we gotta think about that. Bill, you're not commenting on my mug today. Are you out there? I got a new one. <laughs> I'm getting to know all of you out there. It's kind of nice. I appreciate it. Um, all right. So this concept is actually not new, biochemical individuality. Um, so how do we know that we don't all share the exact same nutrient requirement? Um, in the 1950s, there was an American biochemist uh, and researcher, his name was Roger Williams, and he conducted research that revealed that the recommended daily allowance or the RDA of nutrients was not enough to meet most of the bodily requirements of most people's nutritional needs, only some. As a result, he became very, um, invested and interested in the concept of biochemical individuality and how certain bodies' nutritional needs differ. So if you've ever looked at or done any sort of studying in nutritional therapies or even pharmaceutical therapies, they do a test group, right? Whoever, whatever their sample size may be. And they find out, you know, how many people react at two milligrams versus how many people react at five milligrams versus how many people react at 10 milligrams. Well, when it comes to supplements, um, they basically put the RDA at where the first person reacted. So if you had one person who had a reaction at two milligrams, but the majority of the people didn't have any reaction until 10 or 15 milligrams, the RDA will be two milligrams. So, you, so most people, it may not be enough, right? But they have to keep it in the safety measures. And I understand that. Like, I mean, okay, you know, we're not out to harm people, right? But the bottom line is, is most of those RDAs are just not always enough for every single person. And that's where bringing in naturopathic physicians, functional medicine physicians, or physicians that take a root in nutritional therapy is important as part of your care team. Because, you know, it's like many of you ask me, well, how many milligrams should I take of this or that? And my answer is always like, I don't know. I, I, I don't know till I talk to you. I don't know till I do an evaluation, I don't always know. There's a general guideline and you're usually safe with the RDA, but you may need more. And that's where you need to have your doctor look further into your individuality. Make sense? Good morning. Got some more good mornings over there. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, Monday. All right. So the RDAs that we see today largely depend on the notion that everybody metabolizes and absorbs nutrients exactly the same. Now there's a big problem with that, right? I, I, bet, I think all of you can agree that not everybody absorbs nutrients exactly the same. Uh, we're all genetically different, first of all. We all have different backgrounds. 
We have different lifestyles. We have different environments. Like I said before, does the person who lives, you know, at 9,000 feet have the same metabolism as somebody who's lower? No. You know, is somebody in a sunny climate have a different metabolism of vitamin D than somebody in a, you know, cloudy environment? Yep. You know, like where we live matters, right? Um, stress. Darn it. That adrenal fatigue, that stress, that chronic stress. We've talked about so many ways that stress impacts your digestion and lowers your nutrition. Anything from increased requirement of nutrients in order to release cortisol to run from a bear to slowing down the digestion where you don't actually break food down appropriately. We've talked about gut issues. We've talked about healthy bacteria in the gut and probiotics and how they help make vitamin K. I mean, we've talked about all these different things. I mean, if you think about stress, what stress does to heart health and to inflammation and how that impacts nutritional needs, and we look at the health. Um, you know, I know a lot of, not all of you are in America, I realize that, and I talk about America often pretty much because I live here, but if you look at our country and you look at the health conditions that we have right now, um, a lot of them stem from nutrient deficiencies, right? Or put a lot of stress on our body. If you're diabetic, type one or type two, that's very stressful very stressful on the body, that's gonna impact your digestion and your absorption. If you're put on medications, that's gonna impact your digestion and absorption. Pig agrees, she's squeaking her uh, Homer donut. <laughs> um, so we have to consider that when you look at each individual person. I see this a lot, this lack of biochemical individuality uh, treatment in um, hormone, hormone arenas. Um, Pretty much everything in women, supposedly, according to the book, is solved by the birth control pill. Uh, <laughs> yet, there's massive side effects to the birth control pill. So it's kind of like you trade for one. You're like, all right, well, you may not have growth of your ovarian cysts, your endometriosis, but you're at higher risk of blood clot and stroke. Great, uh, which one do I want? Endometriosis and cysts or blood clot and stroke, right? So everyone's different. You can't fit everyone into the same box. The birth control pill may very well be a great option for some people, but not for others, okay? Every genetic marker is now a mutation. Yeah, I know we're mutating like crazy. And we have to move with the times, right? We have to consider um, nutrition and what a role nutrition takes in DNA repair and in, um, you know, we were talking about last week about anti-aging, about telomere length, about nutrients impacting telomere length, um, repair of DNA, you know, uh, B vitamins. You know, the B vitamins is an interesting one because like I just talked about a minute ago, um, and sorry, I'm kind of digressing, but you know, I read your comments and it prompts me to think of something, but I was just talking a minute ago how about how metformin, which is the main drug for type two diabetes, depletes B vitamins and how those B vitamins, you know, impact your health. Well, they're also highly involved in DNA repair. So you have this chronic disease that's inflammatory, that's damaging cells, right? That's breaking DNA and you don't have the nutrients to build it back up, right? And that's why there's so much detriment often with people with type two diabetes with other diseases. We see that right now with the virus going around. You know, diabetics are massively impacted. Why? I don't know if it's the blood sugar regulation issue, um, or if it has to do with um, their inability to repair DNA quickly, like we don't know, right? We just don't know. But, but there's obviously, there's, there's more nutrient required in those people to maintain their system than it is with somebody who doesn't have that type of scenario. So you need to remember that when, um, you know, you're, you're asking what multivitamin should I take, right? Um, all right, so um, we talked about how stress, stress impacts the way we absorb nutrients, stress impacts the nutrients that we need, and another variable is someone's predisposition to certain illnesses. You know, as we talked about uh, last week, I have the genes for celiac, but I don't have celiac disease. But if I were to eat globs and globs of gluten, I probably would, right? So I have a genetic predisposition to that, so I need to make sure that my diet and my nutrition support my weaknesses. Right? We all have weaknesses. We have to find them and we have to support them so that we can keep them from causing a problem, right? Um, so if diabetes runs in your family, you're gonna have to pay more attention to the nutrients that are depleted if diabetes were to happen. Make sense? Okay, so the RDA is not gonna help you. You know, an RDA of 500 milligrams of vitamin C is not gonna do anything for somebody who has rapid cellular decline. It's not enough. Right? But then if you try to give 10,000 IUs to somebody who has amazing cellular decline, it's gonna be way too much. 
right? So, so with that said, you're like, okay, great, Dr. P, what the heck am I supposed to do, right? How do I, how am I supposed to know? And I think part of what, um, well, part of the reason I show up here every day and part of the reason why I do what I do, uh, part of the reason I created my program, I wrote my book, why I still see patients, you know, part of the reason of what I do is that I believe that there is an opportunity here for a fabulous integration, a fabulous integration between different types of practitioners that study different areas of medicine. Um, there is no way that I can remember every single thing that I learned in medical school in the top of my head. Uh, you know, I'm a smart girl, but I have to reorganize like all the time. And that's where those flow charts come in handy, right? Is when you're like, you see someone with a urinary problem, you're like, wow, it's been a while. Shoot, where's that flow chart? It helps and I have to go look things up. And that's what you do. Doctors are practicing, right? So that's why most doctors find a specialty and they stick to it because you can learn a whole lot of detail about one area. You know, I'm very, very passionate about how stress impacts the body. I know the endocrine system, I know it, right? But, um, you know, there's certain other symptoms. If, if, if you gave me, um, you know, prostate health as the main, you know, or like pr cancers, you know, something, that's not my area of medicine. I defer to somebody who can do that, right? Don't have me do surgery on you. I removed two toenails in medical school and um, yuck, oh my God. No, not my strength, right? So I know who to call on when a patient needs surgery. And I think if we came together and we had, okay, we've got doctors that are very, very good at diagnosis, right? But they're doing standard treatment. So if you had diagnosis, helping out with somebody who's trained in nutritional therapy, helping out with somebody who's trained in the particular system you're looking in, and then having someone overseeing it, that's I think what we intended, right? When we had the primary care physician and then we had all these specialists, we intended collaborative work. We're not getting that. I mean, are you guys getting it? I hope you are. Like, I don't mean to be negative, I, I, cause I very much hope that you guys are finding collaborative efforts out there, but I'm not, you know? Um, and sometimes it's very hard for me to even reach a doctor, um, you know, of different specialties that I really just want to exchange information with and work together. Piggy, or, Piggy, uh-uh. You know how you distract Piggy when she gets a little excited? Here, Piggy. Go chew that. Good girl. I'm sorry, Emma. I have two dogs here today. I guess I should feed both. There you go, Em. All right. Um, so um, this is. I'm hoping from this that it kind of empowers you guys to number one, talk to your doctor. Talk to your doctor about your individual needs. Ask them if there's anyone else in their environment that they know. There are many doctors that know naturopaths in their area. There are many doctors that know nutritional therapists, that know holistic practitioners, because we get out there. Uh, you know, as naturopaths, we have to. We have to meet a lot of the doctors in our community. We have to work together. Um, so ask them, you know, hey, if this isn't your strong suit, you know, find the strong suit in your doctor and then find a support staff around that. Um, you know, I wrote a whole article um, on the doctor-patient relationship, which for me is critical for health, critical. Um, and I'm a con I do concierge medicine. so. So for me, um, that's very easy to achieve, this doctor-patient relationship. I can spend more time with my patients, I can get to know them, and I refer them out when I know I need to refer them out. I don't try to take on things or pretend I, I just, or just ignore it. I, there's many times I have to work with other people. I think there's sometimes such a, an egotistical uh, uh, take from many doctors that if they don't know what to do, they just dismiss it. Um, I think it's very important for us, if we don't know if it's not our area, to refer to somebody who does and then follow up, right? Sounds really simple, isn't so simple. Um, so um, I did write an article on that. I'm totally willing to do a live more on that if you guys are interested. If that's something that interests you, let me know. Cause I know some people may be like, okay, yeah, we get it. Like how much, how excited could I get about it? But um, it is interesting because it is lacking. Um, but the main points are, you need to have a communication with your doctor. And if your doctor is not receptive, seek another one. I, I mean, you have to find your people. If you're looking for naturopaths, I have a lot of you guys uh, write me and ask for naturopaths in your area, ones that aren't in Arizona and all around. Naturopathic.org can be a, a, um, a good reference. I actually am considering probably tomorrow, if not later this week, I wanna actually do a live on what is a naturopathic doctor. 
What are the qualifications? What do you look for, right? How do I pick one? So um, I, am, I have that coming up this week, so that will help. So I'll have more information on that because I think it's a good segue. You know, we sit here and we talk about biochemical individuality and you need to have a good doctor and then you go, well, where the heck are they, right? And by the way, there are so many great doctors out there of all disciplines. So if the one you have just isn't working for you, don't give up, keep looking. I work with some amazing MDs. I mean, I work with people that are so incredible, but you know, I had to seek them out myself and it's from patients seeking them out and then reporting them to me saying this person was great, right? Um, so that is how you start this investigation. You take a look at your lifestyle, you take a look at your diet, you take a look at your genetic predispositions and you open up the conversation about what do I need more than anybody else? And that's where you take it from. And if you're always looking at that, um, it could be of great benefit to your health. Also, anytime you're under stress, guys, anytime you're depleting nutrients. So please try to breathe, try not to live in fear and anger. Um, it's only gonna hurt, okay? It just is. Try to be the best person you can be nice to the people around you, be kind to yourself. And that, <laughs> but they don't have cool mugs. The doctors out there don't have cool mugs like me. I bought four new mugs. You might see them all this week. Number one. <laughs> so anyway, thank you to all of you that showed up this morning. Uh, happy Monday. Once again, just to repeat, I will not be here Wednesday because I have some exciting new content that I am shooting. So um, I will be behind a camera on set on Wednesday morning and um, that was the only time we could do it. So it just, it is what it is. But I will do a replay on Wednesday. I will be here tomorrow and I will be back Thursday live. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. So I want you guys to all have a great day. I'm Dr. Trisha Pingle, this is your morning checkup. And uh, go enjoy this beautiful week out there. Thanks to all of you for being here. Bye.